session of the course of crystalline representation by Genaro. So you're ready whenever you want. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Rogelio, for the introduction. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here once again. So let me start uh, by, by recalling uh, some of the things that we saw in the previous lectures. So remember, we defined the period rings. So B Hodgetate, B the RAM, B Crease, and B ST or B semi stable. Actually, the first one uh, was defined by Rogelio, not by me in this, in this course, but we have mentioned it uh, a couple of times. So here we define the, the other three. Mm, be the RAM, be Greece, and be, be semi-stable. And uh, we, we have studied uh, these uh, things here. Let me, let me state them. So for any for B any of this, um, and a piadic Galois representation V, we define the Diodonet module associated uh, like this. So it's the GK invariance of the extension of scalars uh, of V by B, right? Um, and uh, we say that V is B admissible if uh, the dimension of that uh, Diodonet module over the GK invariance of B is equal to the dimension of V over QP. So this, uh, this E um, is not very difficult. We, we saw that uh, in the first two cases, it's just K, the same K. And in the other two cases, uh, this is uh, K0, the maximal unramified extension of K, or, or the fraction field of the of the um, bit vector ring, right? Mm, so yeah, this is not uh, this is not uh, very hard. It's just the definition of uh, be admissible, and so this allows us to define uh, different kind of uh, piadic uh, Galois representations depending on uh, which of these uh, four period rings uh, we are working with. So. Yeah, so here we have the hot state representations, which are the ones that are BHT admissible and so on. So we can define the, the RAM representations, the B the RAM admissible, the crystalline representations, uh, B Chris admissible, and semi stable representations, BST admissible. So, so yeah. Um, what, what is important, I, I, I stated last time, is that the nature of uh, the period rings, and when I, when I mean the nature, I mean the structure. So uh, what kind of structure we have in those period rings? So for example, in uh, Bidaram, uh, we have uh, a filtration, but we don't have Frobenius. In uh, Bicris, uh, we do have uh, Frobenius. And on B semi-stable, we have an additional operator, which is the monodromy, the monodromy operator. So what we stated last time is that uh, these, uh, these structures on the, on the period rings uh, define the, a similar structure on the Diodonet module, on the DBV, okay? So yeah, so let me be more explicit here. Um, so B the RAM comes uh, equipped with a filtration. This, uh, recall that just uh, this filtration is given by the by the valuation, basically. So it's uh, the ith term of the filtration is the one generated by the ith power of t, where t is a uniformizer. It can be chosen actually in a very special way. Mm. And so, yeah, the comment here is this one. So the filtration in B the RAM induces a filtration on B the RAM of B. And we get a functor, uh, which is denoted like this from the, the RAM representations to the filtered vector spaces, K vector spaces. And so, 
I, I am just uh, recalling what we saw last time. So uh, this is not new. Mm. So Bcris comes equipped with a filtration and Frobenius. And this induced filtration and Frobenius on decrease of B. And, and we get a functor decrease from crystalline representations but not only to filtered vector spaces, but to this other category, which is um, filtered vector spaces with Afrobenius endomorphism. And finally, uh, BST comes equipped with a filtration, Afrobenius endomorphism, and monodromy operator. And this induced, uh, this induced filtration, Afrobenius and monodromy operator on DST of V. And so now we get functor from the semi stable representations to filter vector spaces with Frobenius and monodromy. And so, we could relate, we could relate to these uh, four, four definitions or four notions of uh, different kinds of Piadic Galois representations. And these are the relations that we saw last time that uh, Every crystalline representation is in particular semi-stable. Um, every semi-stable representation is the ramp, and uh, every the ramp representation is hot state. And uh, and we asked ourselves uh, at the end of the of the previous lecture whether the converses of these implications were true or not. And uh, and today. Um, I will sketch uh, some examples showing that none of them is, is true, okay? So I, I, I'm just uh, sketching the examples because making all the details might take uh, too long and I would like to get to, to something else today. So, so yeah, let me, let me just say how these examples go and then we move on. Mm, so, an example of uh, a hot state, hot state representation, representation that is not the ramp. Of course, uh, this is not the only way to construct uh, examples, and and it might be actually a good thing to discuss some other examples. But let me let me just state this one. So. Yeah, I will give some some facts uh, that we need in order to justify at more or less uh, things. So, yeah. So, given a hot state uh, representation v, the, it's of the numbers k such that uh, the gk invariance of this is different from zero. This is the case of the twist of CP that Rogelio defined in his course actually. And what we can prove, well, it can be proved that an extension of hot state uh, um, representations, for example, in this case, U and W are hot state. And if they have different uh, hot state weights, then V is also, okay? So we are going to consider an extension like this. So we have that V is hot state. So here we have just the minus one um, state twists of QP. And now we consider this other fact that uh, if V is the RAM, then any extension of this type must be split. And then it is enough to show that uh, there is uh, an extension like this that is non split, right? So, because uh, it would be hot state by the previous slide, but uh, it could not be the RAM because if it were the RAM, uh, then it would be split. So, so yeah. So, in, in order to construct a hot state uh, representation, it's not uh, the RAM. Uh, it's enough to, to show that there is a non split extension like this. And for that, uh, we could check this group homology of GK, uh, QP minus one, check that the dimension is larger than one, that should, that should give us the, 
the existence of that uh, extension. And that's an exercise. So to, to convince ourselves that, uh, well, to convince ourselves that that's enough, uh, it should be easy. So, so to prove that that dimension is larger than one, um, that's more interesting. So yeah, that, that, that would be the first, uh, the first example of a Hodge state uh, representation that is not the round. So at least how to construct or how to prove that there is one. Mm, yeah, so now we go to the following uh, here. So we, we, already, we already saw an example, uh, excuse me for a moment. Uh, yeah, so, We already saw that this is not true. Now we would like to see that uh, this is not true. So we would like to to give um, semi-stable. Um, sorry, the RAM not semi-stable. Yeah, sorry. We want to prove that this is not true. So we want to give uh, the RAM that is not semi-stable. And uh, we are going to use this fact uh, that I stated last time, actually, that in dimension one, uh, semi-stable is equivalent to crystalline. And so it's enough to find a one-dimensional, the RAM representation is not crystalline. Mm. And for that, uh, it is enough to take a ramified character with finite image. So that's an exercise too. So to show that uh, that one should work. And now we go to the following one. Please. So semi-stable that is not crystal. So we are going to use this fact here. Uh, Semi-stable abelian variety has good reduction if and only if its piadic tape module is a crystalline representation. This is actually a strong theorem. Um, but so this, uh, this tells us that uh, it is enough to take an abelian variety with bad reduction. So for example, an elliptic curve, so that, that would be a good example of of a semi-stable, which is not crystalline, just take a, a semi-stable elliptic curve with bad reduction and that should work. And yeah, so those are, those are the examples that I wanted to, to consider here, just to, to finish this uh, classification, this one, this classification of uh, the, the four types that we have defined uh, of piadic uh, representations. But what, what I would like to do from now on is to concentrate more on the, on the geometric part of all this story, right? Uh, so now that we know that uh, we have this classification, we have these period rings, uh, we would like to, 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 to see what, uh, what uh, they are useful for. Um, so, so yeah, let me go, let me go to this, uh, geometric part, which, uh, should take the rest of this lecture and most of the next one. Mm. We are going to, to fix a smooth variety X over K. As usual, K denotes a piadic field, finite extension of QP. Mm. And so when we want to study the cohomology of this variety, we might consider, for example, the algebraic Durham cohomology, right? So that's um, that, that's um, K vector space endowed with a decrease in filtration. But we might also consider the piadic et al cohomology, which is a QP vector space with a continuous action of the Galois group. And 
we might ask ourselves uh, this question, is there a good way to recover the, the Ramco homology from the tal one? Uh, and this good way, I mean, at least functorial. So yeah, let me be more precise uh, with that because uh, it can actually be proved uh, in a simple, relati relatively simple terms that uh, both of these spaces have the same dimension. So H, uh, the RAM, the, the RAM cohomology is a K vector space. It has a dimension over K. And this is a QP vector space. It, ha it has a dimension over QP. And, and uh, as I said, uh, it can be proved in relatively simple terms that uh, they have the same dimension. So we might uh, make this uh, extension of scalars and they will be of course isomorphic as abstract K vector spaces, right? Problem is that this isomorphism is not functorial, okay? So it's not completely satisfying this, uh, this method, right? So, if, if you if you notice this this isomorphism in a certain sense answers the question because we were asking here is there a good way to recover the the ram cohomology from the etal one so if we have the etal cohomology we can recover the the ram via this isomorphism one might say but the problem that this isomorphism is is not functorial uh, tells us that that way of uh, recovering is not the best uh, we should hope for. And so we have the following theorem. It's called uh, like this, C the RAM or C the R. Um, the letter C stands for conjecture because uh, it was a conjecture for a long time. Now it's a theorem. Of course, uh, we are not going to prove it here. I'm just, I'm just stating it. And it says like this. It says uh, X uh, is a proper smooth variety or K. For all R, there is a canonical isomorphism from this, which is the just the, the RAM cohomology of X uh, um, extending the scalars to be the RAM. And here we have the etal cohomology extending the scalars to be the RAM. And uh, this isomorphism uh, respects uh, filtrations and Galois actions on both sides. And moreover, the important thing about this theorem that this isomorphism is functorial on X. So just in order to understand uh, the theorem, um, we might, uh, ask ourselves what's the filtration on both sides and what's the Galois action on both sides. So just re recall that uh, B the RAM has a filtration. Um, also the, the RAM cohomology has a filtration. And so having a filtration here and having a filtration here induces a filtration here, which is, uh, like this. So the ith uh, term of the filtration uh, is given by the sum. It's some kind of convolution, right? Uh, so over all the couples A and B that sum I, we take the eighth, uh, eighth term of the filtration of B the RAM and the bth filtration of uh, the, the RAM cohomology, and that gives me a filtration here. And over here, for, we, we only have a filtration here, so we take the agent the induced only by that one. Mm, yeah, yeah, only by by B the RAM. Mm. And the Galois action on the right hand side. So re recall that uh, we have a Galois action on on both. And um, so just, we, st we just take the diagonal. So we make 
uh, Galois acts on both uh, both parts, and uh, and here only on Bidera. Yeah. So so we have filtration and Galois action on, on both uh, on both sides, and we have an isomorphism which is functorial. So you see here the the. Um, The good thing about uh, the ring be the ramp, right? Because now, if we take uh, the GK invariance on both sides of the isomorphism, so what's going to happen if you remember the, I mean, we're going to take uh, GK invariance here. GK invariant here and GK invariant here. And so what's gonna happen on the left hand side? Well, What's going to happen is that we are going to obtain again uh, the, the RAM cohomology because uh, what we saw last time is that the GK invariance of B the RAM is just K. So here we, are, we have actually just the, the RAM cohomology. And now, and now this is functorial. So, so as you can see, we are recovering the the ram cohomology from the etal one and and now this is functorial so this is what we wanted to to get originally right when we when we stated here the question we were trying to relate uh, the ram cohomology and the etal cohomology and what we are obtaining from this big big theorem is that we can and recover it in this way as the GK invariance of of the base change or the extension of scalars of the tal cohomology by by this ring that we defined uh, we defined last time or well, two two previous in the two previous lectures, right? So yeah, that's that's one. That is the answer to the, the original question. Mm. And yeah, it also proves that uh, this is uh, the RAM, the RAM representation. Of course, we are assuming here that uh, X is proper and smooth, over K, right? So when X is proper and smooth over K, um, the etal cohomology is always uh, the RAM. Okay. So now we consider the case of a variety with good reduction. So what does that mean? Um, that means that uh, there is a proper smooth uh, variety. Um, this uh, calligraphic X over OK with generic fiber X. So yeah, so OK is a discrete valuation ring. Right, so it has two fibers, a generic one and a special one. And uh, here, here it, this is the important, uh, the important uh, hypothesis. We are assuming that uh, this one. So let me let me write the diagram. So. We have this uh, model over OK. Which is a smooth, proper and smooth. OK, that's the big point. I mean, the big uh, assumption.
And here we have the generic fiber, which is the variety that I started with. The thing is that now we have a new, new object. Then I'm going to denote like this x uh, small k over the residue field that I'm denoting by small k. And this one is going to be smooth as well. So that, that's actually the proper and smooth. That's what makes this case uh, special because, well, here we have an additional geometric object, a special fiber, which uh, this one. Mm, it is proper and smooth. And, and now, we might try to relate also this uh, with the cohomology of, of the special fiber. But uh, here we have an interesting thing because the characteristic of small k is p. So we have a variety in, in positive characteristics. So now, now we, we wonder uh, good cohomology for, for these kind of varieties, right? Because uh, the RAM is usually for, for characteristic zero, um, the base field of characteristic zero, sorry. Uh, and so this, this good, uh, what does that mean? Well, there is a story behind uh, that. And that comes back to Vail and his conjectures. Um, but uh, long story short is that we have this uh, crystalline cohomology that works well for proper and smooth uh, varieties. Over in this case, in this case, case a finite, right? In particular, it's perfect actually, um, because we are. We are considering that uh, big K or capital K is a finite extension of QP. In particular, the residue field will be a finite field. And so, and so XK is a smooth and proper over, over a finite field. And, uh, and for, those, for those varieties, uh, crystalline cohomology works uh, very well. Mm. I will state some facts about it. I will not uh, define it. It's uh, it's not too complicated, but uh, it takes some time. Um, so we will we will just summarize uh, these facts. So for each uh, positive integer r, so the rth uh, cohomology, crystalline cohomology of x. Uh, here I mean xk. I yeah. It should be XK here, sorry. It's a W of K module where W of K is the ring of V vectors of K, right? So if K is, for example, um, FP, W of K would be ZP, the, the ring of uh, periodic integers. If not, if K is a finite field with Q elements, um, it would be an unramified extension of uh, ZP. That would be the ring of bit vectors. Mm. So moreover, this uh, crystalline cohomology comes uh, equipped with an endomorphism phi or phi, which is the Frobenius. I mean, it's semi-linear with respect to the Frobenius on the, on the, on the ring of bit vectors. Mm. There is a, an isomorphism that relates uh, this, this cohomology with the Ram cohomology of the, of the generic fiber, 
right so re recall that uh, we are in this situation this here where this one is smooth smooth and proper so in that case we, we have that uh, yellow cattle isomorphism uh relating relating the the crystalline cohomology of this one with the, the ram cohomology of that one which is re really a, a very interesting thing uh and it has to do with this um, this uh, classical geometric uh, complex uh, situation, right? In which we have a, a smooth map over the complex disk, right? And uh, we have here the, I'm not sure how to draw this. So we might have the, a fiber XT for T different than zero which should be a generic fiber, right? And then we have the fiber at zero. This is the complex unit disk. And so when the whole map is smooth, uh, we, have, uh, we have a way of relating the cohomology of of uh, xt with x0 everything works very very well so so it's uh, kind of an uh, arithmetic uh, analogous situation to that one that we have here yeah so that's that's very interesting and uh, and so this, this Yodokato isomorphism allows us to give a case zero structure on the, the RAM cohomology. I, I meant here R. We might consider actually the, the graded algebra um, considered by all of them. Um, I mean, graded module. Mm, defined by all of them, but I'm taking for each R. Mm, yeah, so so we are just taking this uh, tensor product here, just recalling that K0 is the fraction field of, of the ring of bit vectors. Mm. And the big uh, remark here is that that structure that uh, does not depend on the choice on the mode of the model. Okay. And then we have uh, this big theorem, which is uh, called C Chris. Again, same story for as for C the RAM. It used to be a conjecture for a long time. So, so it's normally called C Chris. And it says uh, this. It says that if X is a proper and smooth uh, variety over K with good reduction, we take a proper smooth model of X uh, denoted like this over OK. For all R, there exists a canonical and functorial isomorphism that I'm denoting here by gamma X, which is very similar to the one that we got for B the RAM, just that here we have B crease decrease and we are relating the etal cohomology to the crystalline one instead of uh, the, the RAM that we have here. So in this case, I mean, in this theorem, we are relating the, the RAM cohomology, I mean, the, the RAM cohomology with the etal via, via the, the period ring be the RAM. In the other one, We are relating the crystalline cohomology of the special fiber with the etal cohomology of the generic fiber via the period ring B Chris. Okay. And this isomorphism respects uh, Galois and Frobenius on both sides. And uh, if we if we extend uh, a little bit more the, the scalars, uh, it's going to respect filtrations as well. 
when we go to be the RAM. Um, here on big crease, we have uh, Frobenius. So that, that gives us a Frobenius here and here. Actually, we already have one here. So, so here, the Frobenius should lack on both sides here only on big grids. Yeah, so, so now we do the same thing as before. So before we had uh, this uh, comparison isomorphism between the RAM cohomology and et al. And we took, we took a GK invariance on both sides. And what we got was this, that we recovered the, the RAM cohomology from the et al one. So what happens now? on the other comparison isomorphism, if we take the GK invariance. So now what happens, if you recall, that the GK invariance of big crease is K0, is the fraction field of, uh, of the ring V vectors. So, so what, we get, what we get is this. So the, the tensor product of the crystalline cohomology with K0 is isomorphic to the GK invariance of this. But this, this is just the K0 structure that we gave to, to the, the RAM cohomology, right? So what this is telling us is that the etal cohomology, pialic etal cohomology, determines not only the the, the ram uh, in the in this sense, but also gives me the K zero structure that comes from the crystalline cohomology from the spatial fiber, right? So this is actually deeper, right? This is telling me that the attack homology carries even more, more information. And now we have this question. Um, if we can, can we extend the theorem to the semi-stable reduction case? And uh, I would like to address this question after the break. So I would like to take uh, 10 minutes now. Perfect. So we resume in 10 minutes. Uh, it is two minutes before 12. Okay. So thank you very much, Ferro. Okay. So we are we are back. Um, let me let me share um, again the slides um, because I closed them by accident. Just give me a second. Mm. Okay, now now are you seeing the the, the slides? Okay, just uh, uh, let me remark uh, something. Yeah, so so here I, I am calling uh, Yodokato isomorphism this this one right here. But actually, in in the good reduction case, which is the one that I'm uh, stating here. It's uh, more common to call it uh, Bertelot O's. Yeah, so the Yodokato name, uh, I will tell you in a moment uh, where it comes from. So thanks to Olivier Brignon to, for, for pointing me this out. Uh, this is the 
the usual name in the in the good reduction case. So the the moral of the story it relates uh, crystal crystalline cohomology of the of the special fiber with the the RAM cohomology of of the generic fiber. Mm. So now that was in the good reduction case. What does that mean? It means, sorry, I think, uh, where is it, where is it? Ah, yeah, uh, it's, <laughs> sorry, is it, uh, it's er erased now. So when does it mean good reduction? It means that here we have something smooth. That's the, as I remarked uh, in the in the first part, uh, that was the important hypothesis here. This one is uh, always a smooth because we are starting with something smooth that has this model. But so the important thing about this one being smooth is that the special fiber will be smooth as well. And so we can use uh, crystalline cohomology to study it, right? Because it behaves well when when we are talking about uh, smooth and proper variety over small k. But now what happens when this is not smooth? So this one will not be necessarily smooth. Actually, will not be smooth. Oh, not necessarily. Um, And so we cannot use, in general, crystalline cohomology, right? Um, so we are going to focus on one special case, which is uh, the, the semi-stable reduction case here. So the semi-stable reduction case, it means that uh, the model is locally et al over this right here. So we have um, here like this. So this pi is the uniformizer of, okay. So So what happens in this case, the special fiber is a normal crossing device. So that, that's the that's the big thing in this case. We have um, the special fiber being a normal crossing divisor, and and we cannot use maybe not crystalline cohomology, but in this case we can use something very close to it, because in the in the semi-stable reduction case, so this is probably not smooth. I mean, this is not smooth. 
but if we change a little bit the the notion of smoothness then it could become uh, smooth and uh, this uh, this has to do again with this classical situation in which we have the smoothness outside of the origin we have a map from a complex variety x i'm um, sorry from a complex variety x to the complex unit disk which is smooth outside of the origin so in those cases uh, we have uh, logarithmic poles on the at the origin right and um, and so and so what we have here in this situation is some kind of of uh, logarithmic structure right and and having a logarithmic structure we can change the the um, the notion of smoothness for log smoothness, right? So, yeah, so here, we don't have in general that the special fiber is smooth. In this case, crystalline cohomology is not good. And we need log crystalline cohomology. So, so here's, here's the big uh, thing. So in the, in the proper smooth uh, case, we have, Crystalline cohomology, it works well. This uh, Bertelogus isomorphism. In the semi stable reduction case, we have log crystalline cohomology. So let me, let me say a few words about this. Mm. So, in this situation, we can define a, a log structure. on X, which I will denote by M. That is a, a sheaf of monoids. Mm. That maybe maybe I should write the precise definition, but I didn't do it in the presentations. So I'm not sure if I should, uh, maybe tomorrow I, I bring the, the precise definition of of uh, log structure, but we can define a log structure here and a log structure here. In such a way, in such a way that this is log smooth. So what does log smooth mean? It means that it is smooth, but in the, let's say quote, quote quotation marks, uh, it is smooth in the category of log smooth schemes. So what I mean by this is that uh, when, one, when we define uh, uh, a smooth morphism, When, when we define a, a smooth morphism, um, when we have this, uh, this diagram that we can complete, right? From, by a diagonal. That's the usual definition of smoothness. So now we want to have this, the same diagram, but everything with log schemes, okay? That would be the notion of, of uh, log smooth morphism. So this is log smooth. So now we have, let me put here this. And this, this one right here induces a, a, lo a log structure here. 
and this one right here induces a, a log smooth. I mean, a log structure here. That can be actually explicitly written. But the big thing is that in this situation, we can define a, a crystalline cohomology that behaves practically the same as the crystalline cohomology for, for the smooth variety. So here we can put log smooth, log crystalline, Here it would be log Chris. Um, Isidro is asking if M is a ship of monoids on French X. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here would be log Chris. And now, and now we would have this yodocato now, isomorphism for log Chris cohomology with the log structures that I just said, um, with the ram cohomology. But here is the interesting thing. Mm, no, where is it? So we're going to have CST here. CST and here BST. Here log Chris. and here BST. So in the semi-stable, in the semi-stable reduction case, it can be, it can be extended the result to CST, to the semi-stable conjecture, let's say. Okay, so yeah. So the, 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 answer, the answer here is yes. But, but with low crystalline cohomology, okay? Okay, so that would be the, 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 fir the first thing that I wanted to, to address um, that has to do with this uh, piadi representation. So we have these, these conjectures that now are proved and that the, the period rings that we find are, are deeply involved in them. And, 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 actually, and actually this, uh, this Piadic uh, cohomology theories as um, crystalline cohomology and log crystalline cohomology in this case are also very involved. Um, but now I, I would like to ask the, the following question. This is, this is a question that, uh, that I'm interested in general. So, so suppose that we have this, this same situation, okay? So we have a semi-stable model um, over my variety. So I start with a variety X over, over the periodic field K. And uh, let me erase this for the moment. Okay, so I have this situation. And uh, and with this, right? So semi-stable.
The question is, how can we know whether this special fiber is uh, smooth or not? I mean, it's possible that it is, but, uh, but it's possible that it's not. Um, so that, that would be the good reduction problem for semi-stable case, right? So we have a semi-stable variety over OK, and we wonder whether it has good reduction or not. So, uh, did I say it correctly? So we have a variety semi with a semi-stable model over OK, and we wonder whether it has good reduction or not. Okay, so so there there are some cases in which this uh, this question is answered. So I have here the answer for the here. Uh, for, for abelian varieties. So look look at this fact uh, here. It says a semi-stable abelian variety has good reduction if and only if its PI dictate module is a crystalline representation. So so basically the answer the answer to our question. So this is the same the same situation we had before, but uh, where my variety is abelian, it's an abelian variety. So Basically, what what we are saying is that we have a a good reduction criterion, right? For abelian varieties, in terms of uh, its PI dictate module being crystalline or not, means having good reduction or not for abelian varieties. So the question is, can we get some criteria similar to this one for other kind of varieties, okay? So we might wonder for, let me go to the end. So the first thing that we could ask is for curves. And then for surfaces, um, so this one is okay. Can be can be answered uh, for for. Semi-stable curves. For surfaces, that might be a too general question. So we might focus on K3 surfaces. We might focus on Enrique surfaces. And we might uh, ask for some other types, but uh, we might uh, concentrate on these uh, two cases in a first in a first step. Mm. So again, in the case of K three surfaces, we are going to need the the log structures uh, involved. And here we have uh, like two ways of uh, thinking about it. Okay, so one way is to think about 
de tal cohomology as a, as a piadic uh, Galois representation. And we ask ourselves whether it gives the information of the good reduction or not, just in the same way as the state module does for abelian varieties. So the criterion that we had before was an abelian variety has good reduction, semi-stable ability has good reduction, if and only if its piadic tape module is crystalline. We might ask ourselves if we can say the same for K3 surfaces, for this piadic representation, whether it's crystalline or not. Mm. And the answer is yes. Yes, this was uh, proved by Rogelio actually in, in a Japanese guy, Matsumoto, in independent, uh, independent works. Mm. And the other way to think about this is uh, to consider not the etal cohomology as a piadic, uh, piadic yellow representation, but to consider what comes from behind, like what we saw, what we said uh, a few minutes ago. Where is it? Here. So in the, in the semi-stable case, we have this we have this comparison isomorphism with the low crystalline cohomology and and here we have a monodromy operator and being crystalline if you remember what we saw in the previous lecture um, for a semi stable representation being crystalline is equivalent to having trivial monodromy operator. So, so basically what, uh, what we have here in, in the case of K3 surfaces, we have that uh, the monodromy, the monodromy on the tal piadic cohomology is trivial. But this one is related to to the crystalline cohomology or log crystalline cohomology in this case. And, and this one is related to the, the rank cohomology of the generic fiber of the, of the, I will erase this. to the run. Okay, so so it can be it can be proved actually in a completely geometric uh, piadic uh, way that the monodromy here in the log crystalline cohomology is trivial, and, and so we could recover this. This is a result in piade hodge theory, right? Because it's talking about uh, our representation being crystalline or not. But we can recover that result from a completely, completely different uh, point of view, which is something interesting too. Mm. And in the next lecture, I would like to, to, to give some details on how this passage works. I mean, the passage is, is not, not difficult. 
it's just the comparison isomorphism. But what I meant is uh, to give more details on how to prove this, this criterion and how to prove this other thing and, and see and see what is behind, because there, there is uh, there is some approximation argument there involved, and uh, I think that could be something interesting to to see. And also in the next lecture, I would like to to address some other recent results about the good reduction problem. Um, For even for K three surfaces, and uh, another kind of surfaces, Calabi Yao, I think it's uh, studied too, mm. and we might uh, state some some open problems to just to finish the the course. Um, yeah, but uh, that that will be tomorrow. So tomorrow we will we will give some precise uh, some precise. Uh, details on these uh, two things just to see how things work and and in those in those cases the log structures will be deeply involved so we will we will state uh, precisely the definition of log structure and log smoothness and so on mm. and we will finish with some some recent results and 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 open problems i, I think so yeah I'm sorry I'm finishing 10 minutes early all the time, but, uh, but uh, it is what it is. So I will stop here. <laughs>